Let's take first a look at the new VCAR Pro version 12 user interface and some of the new tools and capabilities. This version was released earlier today after a lot of anticipation on the various forums and Facebook group about uh, when it would come out. I have both VCAR Pro and Aspire licenses. I'll just talk about VCAR Pro in this video. I'll do a separate video on Aspire differences and then a series of videos on some of the new tools and capabilities going a little bit deeper into how to use some of those because they're very, very cool. One of the first things that, that Vectric has kind of touted is a new, cleaner, and improved user interface. And we can see that here. I think uh, the differences are very subtle between the new version and predecessors, but they're important. And I think they really do go a long way to improve overall usability and sort of workflow. And so for instance, First thing is that they knew, have some new icons and new iconography by using this sort of light blue color for the new UI theme. Very subtle, but I really like it. The icons look very crisp and clean, very distinctive. Nothing significantly different, but uh, just a subtle little change that I think does improve the experience just a bit. Now, obviously, if you are colorblind, maybe some of the colors that are used, like there's red on highlighting on some of these icons here, and there's some green along with some of the blues that might present a bit of a challenge, but maybe that can be changed in the options. So before we dive in, one of the things that I prefer to do, I don't like having my, my design tools over on the left-hand side of the screen. And then the tools for generating tool paths and things like that on the right-hand side of the screen. And by default, when you install the Carve Pro 12, this is the layout that you get. So what I do is just simply click on the title bar here. Let me just rearrange my, my primary window uh, a little bit the way I normally like to work. By default, when you install VCarve Pro, and this is also true for Aspire, you have most of your modeling tools and vector drawing tools and other uh, component management things like that, clip out, are all over here on the left-hand side in the set of tabs. And the tools that you use for actually um, generating the toolpaths are located over here in the toolpath. And so typically you'll have these two panels one on either side of the screen and find maybe like me that you go back and forth bouncing quite a bit. And I prefer not to work that way. So what I do is simply click and drag the tools over here to the left-hand side. So both of my panels show up um, on the left and I pin both of them. So they're always there. So they're not constantly coming and coming pin both of my panels so they're always uh, showing up when I launch uh, VCar. And you can make this the default setup, go up to edit, options, and then you'll see save tab layout. By default, this would be no, so change it to yes. And save view layout, by default, this is now change it to yes. And then from that point forward, every time you launch VCar Pro, it'll come up showing your uh, tool paths and your design tools over here on the left-hand side. Just kind of a personal preference, but I do find it a little more convenient for me and the way I work to have everything over here on the left. So with that out of the way, now let's jump in and, and do that first look at uh, the Car Pro version 12. We've talked about some of the minor differences in the user interface here. There are some others. Um, for instance, now there's a sheet drop down here. So if you had multiple sheets, they would appear in the drop down. You simply select one and uh, it'll immediately show in the view. And you could add a new sheet here. This is much more convenient than the way it was done. Uh, previous releases where you had to go to the sheets tab and select your sheet from there or create a new sheet from the tab. There's also um, a drop down for your layers. So you can add a layer and you can select from layers here. And there's a drop down for your 3D components. So you can select your 3D components. So this really puts all of those sort of navigation capabilities right front and center right in the main window. So you're not constantly digging down through layers of tabs, trying to find what you want to, want to see. A nice, uh, nice little enhancement there that I think uh, go a long way to improving workflow. One of the big changes in the version 12, and this is applies to both VCar uh, Pro as well as uh, Spire, is the 3D view. The 3D view tool here has been completely overhauled. It has a much cleaner, crisper look to it. Edges are a little sharper and it definitely performs better as you click and drag uh, to pan or zoom or scroll around your part. It just feels just a little bit cleaner, faster, crisper 
on my machine. So I do appreciate that. The one thing that you'll notice is here in this right hand corner is a new control tool and you simply click it and you can move it around and reorient your part. And if you select one of the faces and click on it, it'll take you to that view. So here's my left view. Click on the face over here, it takes you to that view. And again, you can just simply orient the part any way you want by navigating with this uh, new control or clicking on faces. And of course, you can navigate the way uh, previous releases did using your mouse and right clicking to, uh, to pan and to zoom and, and other features like pan and zoom and the other uh, aspects that you want to. And of course you can, and of course you can use your mouse to uh, orient the part uh, the way we could in previous releases of the software. When I first installed VCar Pro 12 and loaded this model and came to the 3D view to see what it looked like, first thing I noticed when it caught my eye was my vector drawing is actually superimposed on top of the material block along with the tool paths. I thought that was really cool. And I started to dig in and explore that a little bit. And that's when I noticed this new toolbar feature up here in the 3D view. And so these are toggles that turn on and off of various elements that you're viewing in the 3D view. So the one over here on the left is the component toggle. If I click it, uh, it would hide any components and uh, clicking it again would show any components. This particular model doesn't have any 3D components in it. so doesn't have an effect. The next one over though is vector toggle for displaying the vectors. And so if I click on that. Now you see that my 2D vectors have disappeared. And this is actually the default view of VCard Pro 11 and its predecessors. You didn't have the ability to show the vectors uh, in the 3D view on your, on your material. I really like this feature a lot. And now that I've been playing with it for a couple of hours since installing V12, I've gotten quite used to it and uh, we'll take advantage of this. It just gives you a little bit more information when you're looking at your tool paths and uh, looking at your 3D views. There are also toggles for turning on and off bitmap visibility, uh, modeling plane visibility. There is a toggle for turning on the material blocks. You can actually turn on, on and off. There is a toggle for turning the um, origin. And then finally, there's a toolpath visibility where I can turn on and off the tool paths themselves. So nice feature and uh, gives you a lot of information very quickly. So those are the major changes in the 3D view. So let's uh, turn our attention over to some of the new toolpath operations. Again, when I first launched V12, I noticed immediately this new icon here, which is the sketch carving toolpath. Very interesting new tool. I spent a few minutes playing around with it. I will do an entire video on the sketch the carving toolpath uh, as my next video, because I think this is a feature absolutely worth upgrading to version 12 for and a feature that folks who do a lot of CNC routing of uh, V-Card photos will get a lot of use out of it. So stay tuned for that. And then there's this new v inlay toolpath. We've always had the inlay toolpath, but now there's a v inlay toolpath. Devote a video to that one as well. Those are the two primary toolpath operations. And then finally, there is a new manage keepout zone feature. And what keepout zone is, is an area or actually a volume that you can define in your machine's work uh, space that, the, that tells the software, hey, don't move through this, this volume. So for instance, when it's doing a rapid move from one point of your model over to the another point, if there's some fixture uh, jutting up that it might accidentally hit and break your, your tool bit, you can define keep out zone around that fixture and, uh, and select a new Z height um, for that to make the software jump up over and around it. You can, of course, do some of that by using the, the Z gap above the material here. But the problem with this is, is if you have a fixture, say a, uh, a hold down clamp with a, a knob on it, and maybe a threaded rod that, that juts up into, into the build volume by two or three inches, you have to make this clear. It's three inches to be absolutely sure that you're not going to accidentally hit the, uh, the knob. 
And that adds a lot of time to your, your cut, especially if it's got a lot of operations where it's moving uh, from point to point and on a rapid. And so what you can do is to leave your, your Z gap as a, at a reasonable uh, uh, distance, like 0.2 inches I have here, and then define a keep out region where that hold down clamp uh, exists and and define a, a higher clearance uh, for that particular thing. So enough talking about it. Let's see how it works. If you click on the tool, it says to create keep out zone, select the desired vector and click create from selection. Well, we don't have any vectors here yet to define where our clamp is. So let's go ahead and draw that. I'm gonna go over here and select the rectangle tool. And I'm gonna go over to my model. And let's just imagine that we have a hold down clamp back here on this uh, uh, left-hand corner. I'm just gonna draw I'm going to draw a rectangular area that will ultimately define where that clamp is. One of the things you'll see here is this really neat new feature in version 12 of combining the 2D vector drawing tools in the 3D modeling space. So here I am drawing this, this uh, 2D vector rectangle right in the, uh, in the orth uh, orthographic view with my model so I can see exactly where it is. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and we've defined our vector here, and it's selected, as you can see, because it's pink dashed. And I can now set my clearance to uh, whatever height it is. Let's imagine that this particular hold-down clamp juts up into the, the work volume five inches. So I select five inches, and I say create from selection. And now you can see this 3D volume uh, that's defined that will tell VCarve Pro when it's generating your G-code, don't perform a rapid move through that, that keep out zone. You'll also notice it's put these little icons above all the, the vectors. You'll also notice it's updated the user interface over here to show you the, the rapid events with these little, uh, little icons. And uh, that's all it is. You can define as many of these as you want, just select them all and you set your clearance and you're good to go. Uh, you'll notice when you close this, it disappears and all you get is your vector outline. I thought that was a little odd because really what you want to see is the 3D version of your keep out zone. And there is no toggle for turning that on and off here in the toolbar. However, if you go up to the view menu, there is a draw keep out zone 3D view. Select that and now it'll show you that in your 3D view. I don't know why they didn't add a toggle button here. Perhaps that will come in a future release because I think that would be quite useful. So for now, I'm just going to keep that view set to show the 3D uh, keep out zone and be done with it. So that's about it for 3D view and some of the new features there. Finally, there is a new 3D cross section tool. I haven't really played around with this much, but I will be exploring that later today and tomorrow and probably ultimately in a video on that. That's really the only major change I've seen in the 3D modeling tools in VCar Pro. Um, there's nothing significantly new there. There are some other changes in the Aspire version, though, and we'll get into those in some other videos. So that is it for a first look at the new VCar Pro 12 user interface.